So I was going to do this way back there, but it just wasn't doing it for me. So here I am. So would you guys want to get closer to me? Today I'm going to be showing you how to use a drop spindle. And I've included these drop spindles in the packet that I have available in my Etsy shop. So if you want to buy these, I've got the link down below. Somewhere down here. I've provided for you a simple maple drop spindle. I've given you a top whorl drop spindle, which means this whorl is at the top, and all of your yarn is going to accumulate down here, and then you're going to be spinning from this hook over the top of the whorl. I haven't given you a leader yarn because I don't like leader yarns. When I spin, um, when I first started, I did not use a leader yarn. I thought it just added an extra step. It was a little complicated. I just went right ahead without it. So because we're a little bit closer and a little more intimate, you're not going to be able to see where I park this thing. I'm going to be teaching you the park and draft method. So we're going to start with our moving. I've given you about four ounces of Corydale wool. You'll be able to choose your colors and be unique, like the unique person you are. So what you want to do is take a chunk of your Corydale that I provided for you. Just pull it. The further apart your hands are when you pull a chunk off, the easier it is. The closer you get, you're still grabbing onto the same fiber because these fiber, these fibers are very long. So pull it far, and then it'll just come apart like that. Throw that away. You don't need that right now. If it's easier, and I think it is easier, pull these two apart. They'll just want to come apart like that. And then, trust me, this is going to be a lot easier to work with if you're a beginner. Get rid of that. So now you've got your drop spindle, your maple drop spindle. And on this drop spindle, on the whorl, there's going to be a notch. See that little notch there? Remember where that is. That's going to be important later. So when I say you want to draft, Drafting is the uh, process of pulling apart the fibers. So what I'm doing right now, that is drafting. So what you want to do, draft a thin line, or thick, who cares, doesn't matter, How, whatever you're comfortable with. Draft out some yarn, or draft out some fiber, and then you're going to hook it onto the rest of the roving. So now you've got that, but it's going to come apart. So you're going to want to twist it. And that is the entire idea of making yarn. You're just twisting fibers together. So hook it again. Connect that end to itself and twist. Now that is way over twisted, which is what we want when we're starting out. This is the trickiest part. So you're twisting, you're going to use this hand to stop the twist from crawling up into the rest of your fiber. And then grab it here, so this is your next stopping point, this is the new stopping hand. Let go! And now the twist that accumulated down here has crawled all the way up into that yarn that you drafted out, or into the fiber that you drafted out. Twist some more, hold on, stop it. So now you're not going to be able to see because we're super close and intimate, so I'm going to bring my knees up. This is what I do, I park them, I park it, park it right there. Park it and draft, let go. So we've already had some spin in here and by parking it, it keeps it from going anywhere. So, twist, pick one direction. If you don't pick a direction, you're going to end up untwisting everything and it's going to come apart. So pick a direction that's more, most comfortable for you. I picked counterclockwise for some reason. Uh, when I use my wheel, it's, counterclock or it's clockwise. And for some reason, when I decided to do a drop spindle, it's counterclockwise. I don't know. It just feels comfortable. So I'm going to spin it counterclockwise until it stops and it sort of comes back on itself. 
I'm going to park it. Pinch. Draft. Let go. Pinch. Draft. Let go. Pinch. Draft. Let go. I brought my knees down because it's taking a lot of air out of my lungs. Twist. Twisting. Parking it. My knees are down here. Draft. Let go. Park. Draft. Pinch. Let go. So after a while, you're going to start to lose that accumulated twist. And you're going to need to do it again. So you're going to pinch it up here. Twist. Some more. Park it. Pinch. Draft. There you go. So now you have quite a bit of yarn. Be careful that that doesn't end up on the other side of your hook when you do this because it'll come right off. It'll make you really frustrated and want to swear a lot. So you're going to find where that notch is. I told you to keep track of that. Find your notch, put the yarn into the notch, and then you're going to start twisting it. I'll try that again so it's easier to see. Find your notch, put the yarn into that notch, and start winding it onto the shaft of the spindle. So now you're going to want to leave a good amount of yarn left at the end. That way you can bring it up and bring it up into the notch. It just makes everything easier. Or not. Twist it onto the hook and you're ready to go again. Spin it. Park. Oh, it's too small. You guys can't see. See? Let go. Draft. Let go. Here we are. Draft. Let go. Twist. Park. Draft. There you go. Now if you lose it, let's say it comes apart, that's not a big deal. Don't worry about that. All right, you're going to do is keep your grip here, draft a little bit here, and then mush it together. So I'm holding them together with this hand right here holding it together. Pinch just like normal. Let go. You might have lost a little bit of twist so you might need to help it a little bit with your hand. And then if it's still not quite enough, give it another couple spins a little here. Come down. Park, draft, pinch, let go. Don't worry so much about it being completely even. You're new. And the thing that we always tell ourselves is part of the charm of hand spinning is that it's imperfect. Make it like that. Until you're satisfied. And if you're never going to be satisfied, then you need to reevaluate your life. I don't want to overwhelm you with a lot of vocabulary. We can do that another time. I'll have some more vocabulary in the description in case anything is, in case I went too fast, because I do go kind of fast. But 
where it's really important if you really start to get into this it is important to understand words but it's not too terribly important when you're a beginner the important part is getting the the rhythm down and starting to really feel like when you're twisting you can feel how twisted your yarn is up here. You can start to feel it tighten and that really helps you figure out when you should stop. Because if you go too far, it'll break. It just takes practice. But it's unbelievably satisfying when you make something out of yarn that you spun. Especially if you really like to crochet or knit. That's all there is to it. This is a single ply yarn that we're making. I'll do more about plies later, or you can look it up. The internet is a fountain of information. That's pretty much it. That's all there is to it when it comes to making yarn, is just twisting. It's not quite finished. I will be making a video on how to finish up your yarn. It involves soaking it in water, in warm water or hot water. Um, and I'll go over that in a different video. So that's it for today. If you have any questions for me, leave them in the comments down below or send me a message at any one of my social media outlets. Um, I'll have all the information in the description along with some vocabulary, like I said. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it useful, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.